Good morning, we hope you had a Merry Christmas, and received all of the blessings God had for you. As we take time out this morning to prepare for our live watch night service, please enjoy this rebroadcast of an earlier worship service. Our watch night service will begin at 11 p.m. on Thursday night. You will receive your Zoom invitation by email or telephone. May God continue to bless you. And now, let us enjoy the rebroadcast. Sunday morning worship service. God is. God is the strength of my life. God is my source. He's my all and all. Let us go before the Lord this morning. Let us let him in our presence. Let us enter his gates with thanksgiving and with his courts with praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to another week. But Lord, we come into your sanctuary this morning with praises of joy. Lord, you have brought us through. And Lord, we want to give you all the glory and all the honor. Lord, let your presence be felt wherever we may be, Lord. Let those feel surrounded by your love, Lord, and encompassed by the Holy Spirit. Let us be filled with the Spirit so that we can ring out our praises and, and sing our songs and be able to worship you in spirit and truth. For Lord, we are the only one, the one and only one to be to be praised, the one and only one to be worshiped. And Lord, for this we give you thanks. We give you glory and we give you honor. This we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is found in the Gospel of John. It's entitled, The Woman at the Well. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For the Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? As it also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. The woman said, I know the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Jesus declared, I am the one speaking to you. I am he. 
Thus ends the reading of God's word, God's word for the people of God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. At this time, we'll turn to our announcements. Thank you, Reverend Johnson. And now, the announcements. You are cordially invited to join our Sunday school class, each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. It is a great way to fellowship with your fellow members, and, see how God's words can sustain you, during these trying times. So, please call the church, and leave your name and email address on the answering machine. If you do not have an email address, you can join the class, using your telephone. Reverend Johnson will be happy to send you, a Zoom invitation, or call you and provide a telephone call-in number. We look forward to seeing you. When God's Word goes forward, it will not come back void. Our worship services are televised during the week on Edison TV services. Our service can be seen on Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m., and Monday at 6.30 p.m. on cable channels 15 and 45. The service is also available on Edison Demand TV. Please tell your friends. That is, Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m., and Monday at 6.30 p.m. on cable channels 15 and 45. The service is also available on Edison Demand TV. Please continue to practice safe health behaviors during the coronavirus pandemic. Wash your hands frequently, wear a mask in public and avoid large gatherings. Let us now continue to celebrate the men and women of Mount Pleasant. God bless. This is our prayer time. Our prayers go out to all of you who are watching today and worshiping God uh, in this virtual setting. We're praying for uh, God to put his arms around you to give you what you need on this day as well as the days in front of you. We're praying for the firefighters who are still fighting those blazes in the in the western part of this country. We're praying for the new administration that will take office on January the 20th, 2021. We're praying for this country that seems to be completely divided down the middle. And we're praying for all of those who will not wear masks, will not do social distancing, will not wash their hands because they feel for some reason it's a, a sign of weakness or some political affiliation. We're praying for all of the ignorance that's in the world today, that the people who might just forget about their political affiliations or whatever is driving them, but to be able to come together in unity in this country. Specifically, we're praying for Martin Shaw this morning because he was rushed to the hospital. <coughs> Excuse me, he was rushed at a hospital on this past uh, week. Matter of fact, it was on uh, Thursday. He, uh, uh, Miriam uh, had to take him over to JFK and we're praying that everything will be fine with him and with his wife. We're also praying for Patricia Minas, who uh, uh, every Sunday is, is in Sunday school on Zoom with us, but we know that she might not be feeling well. We're praying for my son, Van, who had a scare this week, but now he seems to be doing much, much better with the illness that he's suffering from. Praying for my three daughters, uh, that's Carla, Cindy, and Cassie, as they are now uh, traveling to North Carolina. We had been praying for their aunt, Clarice Reed. And Clarice went home to our Lord and Savior this past week, and they will be having the homegoing service on this coming Tuesday. We're praying for all of you who might be having a little difficulty today, might have a little arthritis, might have a little 
backache, might have a little toothache, who, whatever. We're just praying for all of the couples and uh, all of the families that might be having a little difficulty this week. Special prayers going out for my son-in-law, uh, uh, Lloyd Cooper, and my daughter, uh, Leslie Cooper. Praying for them that they uh, uh, might be able to uh, uh, see uh, a way of uh, uh, working with the church because we have all kinds of different uh, activities going on. We know that Lord is a very, very talented person in that respect. We're just praying for all of you who, have, who are, are, are doing, going the, 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 the 11th mile, the 10th mile, the going overboard trying to help our church uh, and to uh, support it. We're, we're just thanking all of you all who tune in each week, members and, and people who are not members that come, so we are praying for you. So let us now go before this throne of grace and bow and give our petitions to the one who can do something about it, and it is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, merciful Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this week. We thank you for all of what you have done for us. We thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon us. And Heavenly Father, if we have offended someone, uh, knowingly or not knowingly, unknowingly, we ask you to forgive us and to bless that person and let that person know that it was not because of anything I wanted to do, but it might have been just an overlook on my part. We're just asking, Heavenly Father, that you bless all the, uh, the firefighters, all of the first responders, all of the doctors and the nurses, because we know this pandemic is now spiking out of control. We know, Heavenly Father, that now there are new restrictions put on these of us who live in New Jersey. There's things that we now have to do and can't do, let us be able to receive them in the manner in which they are given, and that is to restrict us so that we uh, can prevent the, uh, the, 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 this virus from spreading any further than it's already spread. We ask Heavenly Father that the vaccine that has been developed, we pray that uh, the, 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 uh, the, the pharmaceutical companies will be able to do their, their testing and the testing will be sufficient to give all of us the knowledge we need in order to accept the vaccine once it's put out. We ask Heavenly Father that you continue to bless this church. Bless all who come every Sunday to witness your goodness, to be able to say thank you, Lord, for just waking me up this morning. And we just ask you now that as we go forward, we ask that you continue to bless us. Bless what we do. Bless, bless the virtual service. Bless all of us who are, are, are participating or, or have participated. We just ask you for your loving care. Wrap it around us. Yes, Heavenly Father, touch the Shaw family. Well, we know that uh, Reverend Shaw Miriam is concerned about her husband. We just pray that everything goes well. Now, Heavenly Father, as we continue in our search, we ask that you uh, let it be pleasing in your sight. Give us the words that we need. Let us be able to sing the songs of Zion. Let us be able to be on one accord with you. We ask this in the matchless name of your son, Jesus Christ. And for his sake, we do pray. All the saints said, amen, amen, amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 17 through 27. And I will be reading from the New International Version. So it reads as follows. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life. Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. And you are to honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all things I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, 
he said, Go, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible with God. Thus ends the reading of God's word for the people of God. Amen. Let us all go back. Let us all go back remembering the past. I like to say let us all go back to the old landmark so we can see some of the things and the people that we haven't had a chance to really interact with during this pandemic, but we can see them, we can worship with them, and we can just, just have the praise and glory, thanking God for the past and for the present. Amen? Amen.
And those of you who are not members who are watching this, this service, we're asking that you support this service by sending in your contribution. You can do it one of three ways. If you're near the church, around the church, you can always make a deposit in the mailbox at the church. The church is there. Also, if you would like to mail in, send in a check or a money order, we'd be happy to receive it. The address is on the screen, 1087 Grove Avenue, Edison, New Jersey, 08820. Also, those of you who would like to use your credit card, you can also send a donation in using PayPal. Uh, you would accept all of the major credit cards and we'd be so happy to receive contributions from you. So we know that you're going to be faithful, obedient to God's will to be of children. So let us now pray over this offering. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for these who have given back a portion of what you have blessed them with. We ask now, Heavenly Father, that you bless it, consecrate it, let it be multiplied tenfold, surely, Heavenly Father, so we can use it here on earth for your kingdom. We ask now that you bless it in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Have you ever wanted to do something, but you were unable to accomplish it? You set out to do it, but for some reason you just couldn't accomplish it. You look back to see what got in your way that prevented you from achieving your goal. Then you realize your excuses became your justification. And in reality, they became a barrier to accomplishing the outcome you desire. Well, one might ask, what barriers are keeping you from turning your life over to Jesus? Well, today's sermon, hopefully, will inspire you to remove those barriers that keep you from achieving the blessings Jesus has for you. So after the sermonic selection, please give your attention to a sermon I preached a few years ago. 
It is entitled, Barriers to a Better Life. Barriers to a Better Life. Speak 
Amen. Let's give him some praise, church. Let's give him some praise. For he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. He said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted not if the pastor be lifted up, not if your spouse is lifted up, not even your favorite son is lifted up, but if I be lifted up, I will draw all men, all men unto me. Amen. That's good news on this Sunday morning, knowing that he will lift you up. He will do the lifting. Amen, amen. Rising, giving honor to God, Jesus Christ, uh, first of my life, I am just so happy and tickled. Oh, my goodness, to be here. Oh, my goodness, I have had me a good weekend. The Lord has blessed. I've been, whoa. <laughs> Friday night, my wife was honored at a banquet and... Uh, the Marconi Society, the, uh, uh, the man who invented wireless telephone. All of you all who have cell phones, you can be thankful to Mr. Marconi. Well, the Marconi Association uh, pre presented her an award on Friday evening, and the Lord blessed us. Uh, my mother-in-law was able to go, and she sat there and ate that chicken and the mashed potatoes and Lord have mercy. She had a good time. Sister Johnson, you should have seen her. She was all dialed up and looking all good, and everybody was hugging her, and she, you know, she was just as proud as punch to see her daughter. Then my wife and I had the opportunity to go to Rutgers yesterday and sit on the 40 yard line. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, yes. And we were on the sunny side of the stadium. So, <laughs> you see, the reason I'm telling you this is because God is good. And sometimes it's the little things that happen in life that gives you the most joy. Just being able to sit at a football game with my wife. I mean, I don't get a chance to sit with my wife very often, not even in church. So to sit with her and to be able to laugh and talk about uh, the football game together, that was a blessing. And we thank the Lord for that. So, uh, Pastor had him a good weekend. <laughs> Got a paper due. <laughs> Didn't do my homework yet, but I... <laughs> That's the problem of being in seminary. It seems like seminary just teaches you how to write papers. So, <laughs> but that's all right. This weekend was a good weekend, and I'm proud of it. Yes, 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 I am. Well, there is a word from the Lord, and uh, <clears throat> it's coming from that 10th chapter of Mark. You all have heard this, this, uh, this scripture. On, I know you have heard this before on several occasions. But it's one piece of it that I just want to share with you for just a short length of time, and that's coming from verse 21. And it says, Jesus looked at him, that's the uh, young ruler, and loved him. And then he says, one thing you lack. One thing you lack, he said. Go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. So uh, it's interesting. The one thing that he was lacking. So I, was, I thought about that. I said, you know, a lot of times... There are things that keep us from accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. There are things that keep us from saying, I'm sorry, when you know you should say, I'm sorry. There are things that keep us from going to visit someone when you know you should go and visit someone. And because these things, these obstacles, get in your way, you miss your blessing. So for just a brief period, I want to share with you this sermon. It's entitled, Barriers to a Better Life. Barriers to a Better Life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, merciful Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. We ask now that you allow uh, your goodness, your grace, and your mercy to fall upon this, this man of God who will be bringing your words. Bless this waiting congregation. Allow them to be able to receive what has been prepared. 
Let it uplift them. Let it be edifying to them. Let it be uh, stimulating to them. But most of all, let it be encouraging to them to let them know that you're still in the blessing business and you can even bless us when we don't show the love that we need in order to receive your blessing. So we ask it now in the master's name of your son, Jesus. I pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Barriers to a better life. I know you all have uh, come up against barriers. You, you read about uh, a barrier uh, in our responsive reading where this, 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 this Samaritan woman who now encounters Jesus at a well. And the barrier there is one of a sexism. A sex, yeah, you know, you, you can't, the sexes, you can't, a woman is not supposed to be talking to a man, and most certainly a, a Jewish man is not supposed to be talking to a woman in public. And on top of that, you got a racial barrier there because a, a, a Jewish man should not talk to a Samaritan. After all, the Jews and the Samaritans didn't get along. But she was able to cross that barrier and Jesus was able to cross that barrier and explain to her all she needed to know about living water and how her life could be so much better. So the whole idea was the fact that she was able to cross barriers. And sometimes we have roadblocks, <laughs> we barricade ourselves in, we hide behind masks and do all kinds of things to keep from crossing a barrier. Unfortunately, when we do these things, we, we prevent ourselves from, uh, from receiving what God has for us, and that's a better life. In our scripture for today, we see a young ruler who comes to Jesus and he asks a basic question, a question that all of us had asked at one time or another. Well, what do I have to do? What should I do in order to be able to get into the kingdom of heaven? We read back in uh, John 3, uh, you remember reading about a, a Pharisee by the name of Nicodemus who came at night to see Jesus, and he says, Lord, I know you must be a man of God, and I am asking you right now, what must I do to be in the kingdom of heaven? And you know that story of Nicodemus and Jesus. Jesus says, well, in order for you to gain entry into heaven, you have to be born again. If you don't know what born again, just talk to our new members uh, orientation class. They learned all about it this morning in their class. He says, well, how, how, how can I be born again? I'm an old man. Do you mean I have to go back into my mother's womb and, and be born again? And Jesus says, Nicodemus, 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 you are a teacher of the law. We're not talking about a physical birth. We're talking about a spiritual birth. So you see, even in that dialogue between Nicodemus and Jesus, Nicodemus was asking the basic question, what must I do to gain entry into the kingdom of heaven? And the answer to Nicodemus was, you have to be born again. Now we have this young ruler coming, and he's asking basically the same question of Jesus. But Jesus doesn't say you have to be born again. Jesus gives him a different question, a, a, a answer. In our scripture, in this similar dialogue, he is giving him a different answer because there are different players. There are different people. You see, each of us have our own answer when we ask Jesus, what must I do? If it was so easy... We could just paint you all with one big brush and say, if you do this, all oh, you will be in the kingdom of heaven. But you see, Jesus knows each and every one of our hearts. And it's what in your, what's in your heart, which is what matters. You see, when, what, what must I do to gain entry into heaven? To, to this point, Jesus is saying, uh, what, 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 what I want you to do to gain salvation 
And it does not come from you doing good works. It does not come from you doing good deeds. You see, the young ruler was telling Jesus that of all of those commandments that you have spoken of, I keep those commandments. I haven't done any adultery. I, I, I'm good. I respect my mother and my father. You know, I brush my teeth and comb my hair and I take a bath every day. I, I've done all of those things and, and I open the door for folks at the church and I come to church every Sunday and I'm here for the afternoon services and I'm the first one in here, Sister Johnson, on Wednesday nights. So what, what, what do you expect of me? And Jesus says, uh, yeah, I know you've done all those things, but uh, there's something that you lack. Something that you lack. As often as you have heard this, <laughs> we, 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 we jump to conclusions because right away uh, the man was rich. And we think because he was rich, that's why he couldn't go into heaven. But what is it? Have you ever asked yourself, what is it that the man was lacking? I mean, he was a wealthy man. He had everything. He had kept the commandments. And then Jesus gives him a challenge to expose his weakness, to identify that which he was lacking. Jesus says, I tell you what. <laughs> You sell everything you got, give all your money to the poor, and then you come and follow me. And then what he was lacking was exposed. The man dropped his head in sadness and walked away because he was rich, and he didn't want to give away all of his money. And then Jesus says something that's very intriguing. He says, you know, it's difficult for a rich, for people who are rich to get into heaven. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich people to go into heaven. And that is a, a passage that has always intrigued me. Why would Jesus talk about rich people going through, or uh, 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 getting into heaven is, is, worse, is, is hard, more difficult than a camel going through an eye of a needle? And then I realized that Jesus was not talking about sewing and thread. <laughs> he wasn't talking about a needle, this, this small metal thing with a hole in it that we call an eye, and you put thread through it. Because if that was the case, none of us, none of us would get into heaven. Because none of us could go through the eye of a needle. Forget about being rich. <laughs> Even the poorest of poorest could not get through the eye of a needle. But what he was talking about was simply this. And in the dam of Jesus and in that area where he was, it was a, a mountainous area. They always had walls and, and, and gates going into cities. And when the rock formation would fall on top of another rock, it, it might form what we would call a gate and, and, or across the road and, or a bridge across the road. And, and these camels, that part of a caravan loaded down with com, uh, merchants' goods on their backs uh, trying to get through this little eye. That's what they would call it. So in order for this camel to get through this low-hanging gate or for this camel loaded down to get through this rock formation that has formed a, a small bridge, an eye, the camel has to get on its knees and crawl under the bridge. So Jesus is using this, this, this to let you know that if you are rich, it is very difficult for you to get on your knees and ask for help because your wealth is telling you that I don't need anybody. You see, that's what he's talking about. Sometimes we will find ourselves in a situation that we have enough wealth that we don't have to depend on anybody. We can do it ourselves if we wake up and don't feel good one morning and, and things are not going right and we have a little pain or a dull in our life. We don't have to call on the Lord. What we do is take us a vacation. We take a cruise. If the weather is bad outside, snow everywhere, we just go to South, South America somewhere 
because we have the money. The rich people could depend on themselves. They depend on their wealth. Why would I get on my knees when I can pay somebody to get on my knees for me? <laughs> Why should I ask for help when all I got to do is go to the bank and, and write a cashier's check and I got it like that? Why should you pray for something, pray for another car if you already got five in your garage and you're building a, an elevator to take them up to the second floor? Why would you ask for anything when you have everything? You see, you see, his security was based on his position and his money. He didn't have to ask for anything. And I, I thought about that a long time. I said, now, I know that there are rich people in heaven. So Jesus was not saying that rich people don't go to heaven. He says it's difficult. He didn't say they don't go. They, there are rich people in heaven. But the rich people in heaven have enough sense to realize that they didn't get there because of their money. <laughs> I once heard a story about that, though. Uh, uh, this rich man was married to this, uh, this, this widow. And uh, <laughs> it was so funny because she said, when I die, I'm going to take this money with me. None of y'all. It's going to be a sad day for all of y'all because I'm taking the money with me. And lo and behold, she died. And there was a big old Brinks armored truck backed up to the seminary, cemetery and dumped all of her money off in the grave with her and covered it up. She said, I'm taking it with me. You all are not going to have any of it. Now, what's she going to do with the money? You see, part of what Jesus was telling this rich man is you have to have an attitude of gratitude. He was telling the rich man that although you have wealth, have you done anything for those who don't have wealth? Have you used your money to glorify God? Have you done anything that's going to make somebody else's life a little bit more pleasant? Because that's what he was looking for. It wasn't the fact that the man had the money. It wasn't the fact that Jesus is telling us to sell everything we have in order to come into his kingdom. I mean, he's not telling you to get rid of your house. He's not saying get rid of your car, pull off your fancy clothes, take off your nice hat. He's not asking us any of those things. He wants to know what's in your heart. And he knew this young ruler. This one ruler who says that I, I, I'm just about perfect because I have kept all those commandments, he didn't realize that he had broken the first commandment. The first commandment that says, have no other God before me. And he had already put his money before God. You see, sometimes we can do that very easily. Very easily. Our barriers can be our God. Pastor says, uh, you know, we need to come down here for our men's day and women's day. Make it plain, Pastor. Don't start meddling now. Because if you come, there's going to be a blessing. Well, what's the barrier? Well, Pastor, you know the, the giants are playing the cowboys on that Sunday. <laughs> Uh, what's, the, what's, what's the barrier? Well, Pastor, do you know that my son is in that soccer match on that Sunday? What's the barrier? Well, you know, Pastor, I've been working all week, and Sunday is the only time that I have to rest. And Sunday is when I rest. What's the barrier? Well, you know, my back hasn't been all what it should be. <laughs> And I want to just lay down a little bit. Forget about the fact that he's the one who has healed your back. But my back is not. See, those barriers come. And before you know it, you're putting them before God. And that was the whole thing. We say, well, no, Lord, I won't have anything before you. But what about my car? Oh, no, Lord, I won't have anything before you. But what about... You know, you can think of a lot of things that we can put before God. And that's what Jesus 
was trying to get this young ruler to see. It wasn't that Jesus wanted the young ruler to give up his money. He wants us to have money. He wants us to be wealthy. He wants us to be able to help other people. He wants us to have enough money that we can help those who don't have money. But what's in your heart? What are you lacking? You're lacking that, 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 that humility. You, you, you're lacking. You, you have so much pride that you, 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 you can't get on your knees because if you're going to sell everything that you have and follow Jesus, what does that mean? That means you got to depend on him. And he's going to take you someplace where you don't know where you're going. Yeah, but, 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 but God, I ain't got no job. I know you don't have no job. You got to depend on me. Oh, but I don't have a car. I know you don't. You have to depend on me. You see, people are their strongest when they are at their weakest point. Uh, make it plain, Pastor. What are you talking about? I mean, how can I be strongest at my weakness? You are at your strongest point when you're at your weakest. Because when you're at your weakest, you say, Lord, I stretch my hand to thee. For no other I know. As long as you're strong, you walk around like you're a Coca-Cola in a bag of potato chips. Thinking that everything is hunky-dory. You don't have to worry about a thing. Oh, yes, I can pay all of my bills. Uh, yes, I don't have to worry about my kids. They're already in college. I can pay the tuition. I don't have to worry about a job. I already got a, a good retirement plan. Oh, yes, I, I have my health plan paid for. When you're in that situation, you think you got it all. But if you're going to follow Jesus, you're now saying, Lord, I don't know where, where, where the money's going to come from. I'm just praying that it comes. I don't know how you're going to bless me. I, I just know you're going to bless me. I don't know where, how to go and do these things. I, I know you'll make a way out of no way. If you're going to follow Jesus, you don't know where you're going. You see, we must remove all of the barriers, all of the barriers, if we want to see him fully. You got to get these barriers out of Jesus gives us life-changing challenges. He talks straight to us. He doesn't come up and, and give us some Millie Mouse goody goody feeling thing to this young ruler. The young ruler says, What must I do to be in heaven? He says, Sell everything you got. I mean, you can't get no straighter than that. And follow me. And that's what you have to do. What barriers are keeping you from turning your heart over to the Lord? What barriers are keeping you from being what Jesus wants you to be? What barriers have you put in front of God that's more important than doing what God wants you to do? God in Hebrew says, forsake not the assembly of my people. We are assembling here next Sunday. What barrier will you put in front of what God has already told you? You see, it's easy for us to make excuses. It's easy for us to say, well, you know, <laughs> and that's all right. Jesus was trying to get his crew together. For the young folks, he was trying to get his posse together. And he was talking to people, and people were saying, well, you know, I would love to come with you, Jesus, but, you know, I just bought some cows, and uh, I want to go see if, they're, if, they, if they are arrived yet. I would love to uh, come with you, Jesus, but you know my wife is sick and I got to go see about her. Uh, I would love to come with you, Jesus, but you know how it is. Uh, let me think of a good one. Um, 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 um. Well, well, Jesus, uh, I got to go and pay some bills. You see, we can make excuses and we read these stories in the Bible and we get upset with the people who deny Jesus. But if we take a look at ourselves in the mirror, we will see that we do some of the same things that these people are doing. And then we figure that we have a good justification because, because we got a good excuse. No, we don't have a good excuse. You got to ask yourself, what barriers are keeping you from turning your life over to Jesus. And whatever that barrier is, get rid of it. Because it has become your God. I have friends who tell me that, well, I'm sorry, I have to play basketball on Sunday morning. 
I have people who tell me that, well, Pastor, when I get myself together, I'm going to come to your church. Those are barriers. And I'm saying, don't you know that you are putting all of those excuses, those barriers before God? Don't you know that we got blessings going on down here? Don't you know that there are people who were sick or now walking around saying that I'm well? Don't you know that there were people without jobs or now testifying that they have jobs? Don't you know that there are people who saying I have been, I, 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 I'm looking for the Lord and I found the Lord? Don't you know that there are people down here giving testimony on how good God is? Don't you know that he can make a way out of no way? Don't you know that? Don't you know that? I watched 50,000 people come into little old bitty New Brunswick, uh, town of New Brunswick yesterday. Why? Because the word went out. The word went out that the Scarlet Knights football team was on their way to a, a perfect season. And because the word went forward, they packed out the state. Now, we ain't been packing that stadium out. I'm going to tell y'all right now. They, I mean, you could get tickets. Now you got people standing outside. You got an extra ticket, sir? I said, no. <laughs> the word went out that there is something good happening at High Point Solution Stadiums in New Brunswick. The word went out that we have a new coach. The word went out that we got new uniforms. The word went out that we got a new football team. The word went out that we are now ranked 20 across the nation of all the schools. The word went out. And because the word went out, 50,000 people paid $50 for a ticket and $20 to park. The word went out that Jesus Christ is in this building. The word went out that his glory is right here. The word goes out that he is healing people. The word is going out that he's doing a big thing here at Mount Pleasant. The word is going out that all you got to do is believe in him and you'll have eternal life. The word going out. And let's see if we can't pack this place out with 50,000 people because there is something good going on down here. You can do it for a football game, and ain't nobody done nothing for you for a football game, but Jesus Christ woke you up this morning, started you on your way, put food in your ship, clothes on your back, put moving in your feet, words in your mouth, joy in your heart. Lord, have mercy. You let that word go forth, and you tell those people to tear down those barriers. Tear down those excuses. Tear down those obstacles. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there is no barrier. There is no obstacle. There is no problem that's bigger, that, that's in front of me, that's bigger than the God who's behind me. I'm going to tell you right now. So all you got to do is have a little faith. I know we've been waiting a long time to get a job. I know you've been on that wall praying a long time. I know things are rough and tough for you, but stay on the wall. Keep your faith. And I guarantee you, a door will open when you don't even know the door is there. He'll make a way when you don't even know a way is there. He'll do something that you're not even expecting. The person that you least expect will do something for you, and you'll never know. So get rid of the barriers. Tear them down. Oh, yeah. There was that story about that lady, the Canaanite woman who was praying for her daughter. Jesus says, get away from me, woman. And all of his disciples said, get away from Jesus. And she says, yes, Lord, but even the crumbs on the table, even the dogs can eat the crumbs that fall off the table. You have to have that kind of faith. You got to have that kind of perseverance. You got to forget about who you are, what you are, and how afraid you are, and step up and say, Lord, <laughs> and I guarantee you, don't let barriers of age, old, young, or in between, don't let barriers of fear, scared, don't know what to do, don't know what to say, let it come forth. And I guarantee you, the Lord will put the words in your mouth. He will put the step in your walk. He will make something out of nothing. And all you got to do is just believe. All you have to do is believe. So the big idea of this sermon, so that you know, so that you can carry it with you, is simply this. What barriers are keeping you 
from turning your heart and your life over to Christ. Whatever the barrier is, get rid of it, and I guarantee you, you will find a blessing. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give him some praise. Let's give him some praise. For he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of our praise. Let's give him some praise. Let us stand on our feet. Amen, amen, amen. When the word is preached, we make no assumption that within the hearing of our voice, everyone who heard has accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The Bible tells me that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Savior. He, he went to Calvary's cross and died for you on his cross. He rose. He, he spent three days in a borrowed tomb and on the third day he arose with all power in his hands. He now sits on the right hand of the Father in heaven mediating and intervening and and, and, and looking out for our behalf. So if you really and truly believe that, the Bible tells me that you're already saved. You already have a home in heaven. You've already answered that question, what must I do? You've already done it. He said, all you have to do is just believe in me. And if you believe in him, you already have a home. But there might be someone who now that they have a home in heaven, they would like to just come, join this church, become a member of Mount Pleasant and come on Sundays and share that goodness and that joy with everybody else. So I extend the invitation to you now. If you would like to join this church, you can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come on your Christian experience or you can come by a letter of introduction from another church. Will you come? Let us sing, Come to Jesus. Barriers to a better life. Amen, amen, amen. That was a sermon that was preached a few years back, but the content is just as relevant, relevant today as it was back when we preached it. Amen, amen. Well, Pastor Cully has already given you, uh, opened the doors to the church, already let you know that uh, if you believe in Jesus Christ with all your heart and mind, that you have already received salvation. But I just want to uh, extend that invitation to you in this virtual setting, that if you would like to join this church, please uh, send me an email, uh, call me on the phone, drop a note at the church, but uh, let us know that you would love to be a member of this church, and we will most certainly make it happen. Now let us pray as we close out our service. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the words that were preached. We thank you for these who received it. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that they received it in the manner that it was given. That is to inspire, to uplift. Heavenly Father, move some of those barriers that keep us from doing the work that you would have us to do. Move some of those barriers, those doubt, that, that doubt that we might have that would prevent us from calling a, a, a neighbor or calling a loved one. Or, or at least listening to what our governor might have to say. Remove some of the barriers of pride, Heavenly Father, that we might be able to say, uh, excuse me, thank you, I'm sorry, or what have you. But we just thank you for your word. Now we ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless this ministry, continue to bless those who are watching today. Surely we give you the praise, glory, and the honor. Now unto him who presents us faultless before his throne of grace, Rue, rest, and abide in these his people, henceforth and forevermore. All the saints said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Go 